this month on the Taboo Topics podcast. So I'm not telling everyone here on this uh, podcast to go and get some Cialis or Viagra to help you out. I'm not uh, saying you have to have more sex. I'm not saying you should have, have more erections. But I'm also saying yes, uh, when you do stretch that penis out uh, with the help of an erection, it, it can help maintain that length, absolutely. Welcome to Taboo Topics, where host Mary Frances Emmons tackles awkward medical questions with Orlando Health's top health and wellness experts, getting the answers you've been searching the internet to find. Submit your own questions by emailing the letter r-podcast at orlandohealth.com or leave a five-star rating with your question in the review section. This podcast is produced and sponsored by the healthcare leaders at Orlando Health. Hello, and welcome to Taboo Topics, where we discuss embarrassing personal health questions and try to take some of the stigma out of those discussions. I'm your host, Mary Frances Emmons, and today we're talking about why a man's penis might actually get smaller with age. My guest today is Dr. Jamin Brombach. He's a urologist and a sexual health expert with Orlando Health. Welcome, Dr. Brombach. Thank you so much for having me for this exciting, no pun intended, topic today. So what is the reason for this uh, shrinkage? Is there a general freaking out when men find out that this might happen? I mean, wow, what is the reason? So I I just want to highlight how you hesitated with every word uh, with asking the first question here. I think a lot of patients hesitate the exact same way when they come and see us to discuss this conversation. And a lot of patients make an appointment for something else. Like it'll say in enlar- new patient in large prostate or new patient kidney stone. And I walk in and they're like, listen, I just use that as a reason to, uh, to come and see you, but here's the real issue. I'm concerned about the size of my penis, or I'm concerned about my testicles being smaller, or it's something that my partner brought up. So Uh, It's definitely a topic that is super uh, embarrassing, and I'm hoping that we can take have a little fun with the topic, but also take a serious approach to it over this conversation on how, how and why you should not be embarrassed to bring up this conversation and what we can do to help you prevent this problem in the future. Yeah, that kind of makes me a little sad when you tell me that men feel this so deeply, that it's such a widespread concern, but people are clearly reluctant to speak about it. So let's speak about it right now. What causes this? So the reason people don't like speaking about it, because I think men in general really inflate the size of their penis and the girth of their penis. Uh, so let's get let's get down to averages. A flaccid penis, when it's not erect, on average, this is all men all across the world, is about three inches. Erect penis is, depending on what literature you're using uh, or reading, it's about 5.1 to 5.4 inches. So when we hear our bros say, oh man, I'm seven inches, eight inches, 10 inches, they're probably inflating the size of their penis. The second issue is that men also always feel like they're comparing themselves to what they see in the adult film industry. So you have to understand those are actors and those are the people that are chosen. If the fascination of the decade was a small penis and that's what you would see, but there is no small or large penis. You have what you have and you should be happy with it. So back to the original taboo topic here is the embarrassment that comes with talking about the size. I think we have a lot of social factors that get men extremely insecure, not just when they see it shrinking, But even when they see what they have, when they're not even thinking about the shrinking, there's always like an insecurity because there's always a comparison to something that's not really a reality. But I would imagine, given that that certainly is true, if you also are indeed experiencing age-related shrinking, I can see how that would be something you would notice and something that would be a concern. No, absolutely. So you mentioned age-related At any age, it can be a concern. At any age, you could see your penis size going small. I would say the number one reason I see men in my office with a question or concern about the penis size is they've gained some weight. But how do you kind of gain their trust before you just say, oh, man, you're you're just you gained some weight. You know, you got the dad bod going on here. Yes. If you don't use it, 
or because of age, you may lose like half an inch, maybe an inch, but you don't really lose the entire penis. And it's not as it's not a significant amount of loss that 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 men may think. And a lot of it is it just gets hidden. It gets hidden in the fat. It gets hidden in that excess skin, excess tissue um, that recurs. So I always tell my patients like, listen, man, listen, we, we, we can go down this whole long path of aesthetics and cosmetic things that we can do. But listen, if you lose 10 pounds, you're going to see an extra inch of your penis. So actually when I, when I'm doing penile implants in patients, uh, which is a different conversation for a different taboo topic, I always tell them, listen, the surgery is going to be two months from now. If you lose 10 pounds, I'm going to be able to get an extra inch in you. And you're going to be, you know, maybe exactly what you were before you had these erection issues. So the penis is there. It's the same size. It's just what is starting to cover it up. And that's the number one cause of the, the loss of length that patients complain about when I see them in the office. Are there other less common causes? Like, are there reasons that a more fit man might also see this effect? So there are some other things where you, that can cause you to feel or see that your penis has lost length. There's something called Peroni's disease. Uh, that is when you have a scar uh, within your penis and it causes abnormal curvature to your penis. So when you have that scar and that abnormal curvature, you can lose some length because of that, because it's kind of like tangled. Like it's it's the scar doesn't allow the penis to either extend the entire way, or if it does extend, it starts curving. So they, they notice a loss of length in that regard. Another cause could be you've had surgery, patients that have their prostates removed for prostate cancer, whether it's, uh, and nowadays it's done robotically, most of these procedures, the prostate is removed. And with the prostate, a part of your urethra is removed as well. So when that's removed, you may see that you've lost about an inch, maybe sometimes even two inches of penis. Wow. But that's a conversation your surgeon usually has with you that you may notice a loss of the penis. A third reason is if you don't use it, you don't really lose it, but stretching helps. Kind of like when we do our morning stretches, we're much more flexible, mobile. Like we can do things that, you know, we may not be able to if we have a stiff body. If you're not able to stretch your penis out, whether you can't see it because you're obese or whether you've lost the ability to have erections or some other causes that we've talked about already, he may theoretically lose that length, but the length is still there. It's just trying to get it stretched out to a certain degree to get it back. More on this after the break. This episode is brought to you by the healthcare leaders at Orlando Health, where we deliver the future of medicine today. Orlando Health, choose well. So... Does having more erections or more frequent erections help you keep things kind of uh, limber and maintain that length or not necessarily? So I'm not telling everyone here on this uh, podcast to go and get some Cialis or Viagra to help you out. I'm not uh, saying you have to have more sex. I'm not saying you should have, have more erections. But I'm also saying, yes, uh, when you do stretch that penis out uh, with the help of an erection, it, it can help maintain that length. Absolutely. So you mentioned prosthetics earlier. That's been in the news lately, prosthetics and implants for men to increase length. Is that something that's done cosmetically or for a medical concern, or is it something anyone could consider? Well, there are procedures that can be done to visibly make it look like you have a longer penis or a thicker penis. A majority of these, yes, are in more of the cosmetic space. So insurance may not cover it, and you may have a hard time finding someone that does it unless this is all they do. But when it comes to length, there's like a ligament. So there's there's like this little like hook or like this ligament that attaches to your pubic bone, which is the bone that you feel. It's kind of like right over your bladder. So when you're like touching the top part of your the base of your penis or when you feel like your bladder is full, that bone that you hit is the pubic bone. There's like a ligament um, or like a rope, probably a better way to describe it, that kind of holds your penis up. So when you get erect, it kind of goes in that direction. Sometimes men get that that released so that they can see more. So the penis kind of falls down. It doesn't really lead to more length. It's more the perception because it's no longer hooked up. But then your erection may not go up. It may kind of go straight or be down. So it can cause you know some other issues. What I'm trying to get men to realize is that there's things that are tried and proven and FDA approved and tested in research. But then there's also things that are emerging that may not be the best for you. So when when men hear about penile implants, 
there are penile implants that are used for erectile dysfunction. These are devices that we put inside of your penis to help with erections. It doesn't make you bigger. It doesn't make you thicker, but it does get you functional. But then there's a lot of marketing right now about penile implants that are put underneath the skin to make it look like your girth is bigger. There's also some marketing out there for penile fillers. These are injections, the same stuff that people put in uh, their eyebrows and their lips and other parts of their body. Uh, and these things are more in the cosmetic space. So you're not going to find a urologist or you, it's going to be hard to find a urologist that does this uh, because there's just not much research behind it. Uh, and so it's one of those things that you have to be very careful what you get sucked into. And usually my conversation convinces them out of doing these aesthetic things. Once you wake up, feel like, hey, man, you're just a man and you, you should be proud of what you have and enjoy it and embrace it. Uh, I think they kind of sway away from it. That's a really good point. So what do partners think about penis size? There was actually a research study done where they asked females and partners, do you prefer a bigger penis, bigger girth? A significant amount, a majority of them said, no, I'm happy with what my man's penis is. But when you ask the same group of people where you ask the partners, the male side, they always think they're inadequate or they should have more or they're not sufficient or they're, or they're not long enough or thick enough or lasting enough. So there's, I think, more of a perception issue where, you know, that Mars and Venus are just not in line here uh, when they should be in that, you know, most partners are happy with what you have. They, they care more about the intimacy, the love, the affection, the foreplay, the hugs, the kisses, the flowers, rather than the size and the length and the girth. So it kind of sounds like there's not a lot of medical reasons why if you notice this, you should be alarmed and see your doctor, particularly if maybe you're honest with yourself and you know that eh, you could lose a few pounds and perhaps things would look different. Yeah, absolutely. And and I think in the introduction, we also mentioned like the testicles, uh, the testicles can also grow or they can get small. And a lot of my men come freaked out because, oh my God, my testicles are shrinking. They're small. What's going on? And then I ask them questions and then they they tell me that, hey, yeah, yeah, I'm on testosterone. Uh, so when you are taking testosterone, you are going to get smaller testicles because the factory in the testicles no longer has a purpose. So you can get a, a shrinkage of the size or decrease in size of the testicles because you're on, ex, you're on exogenous testosterone. The testicles, I think it's very important you know, everyone's so fixated on, you know, they measure their their penis and their girth and they kind of brag about it. But no one really, I think most men don't really examine their testicles or know what they feel like. And they should. You should know what the normal is on your hands when you self-examine yourself. And hopefully every guy out there is doing it. If not, hopefully this encourages them to do it on a monthly basis. Just check and make sure that everything anatomically feels right. Because in the testicle, shrinkage is not really a big deal. It's not that common. But when it gets bigger, especially in certain spots, that's when we get worried about testicular cancer. So when you're looking at size and worried about it, also when it comes to testicle, think about bigger size and bigger spots because that's another red warning sign for some other medical problem inside there. So thank you so much, Dr. Brombot, for joining us today. You can learn more about Dr. Brombot and his work at orlandohealth.com. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Thank you for listening to Taboo Topics. If you enjoyed this episode, please show your support by sharing with a friend and leaving us a five-star review. Subscribe today to be sure you never miss an episode. This show is produced and sponsored by the healthcare leaders at Orlando Health. To find a doctor, walk-in clinic, or emergency room near you, visit OrlandoHealth.com.